In this video, I will show how to use the chain rule of differentiation to find the derivatives of these following functions. First, let's talk about what the chain rule is. And written in mathematical notation, it goes like this. If we have some function y is defined as f of g of x, and this is general f and g functions, not these f and g functions over here necessarily. But if we have this function defined like this, a composite function where one function kind of sits inside of, of the other, then if I wanted to take the derivative, y prime, the derivative of y, I would say that's the derivative of f of g of x, so that that outside derivative with respect to the g function. So that, that's what this, this notation means. I have more to write here, but first of all, it's the derivative of the f function with respect to the g function, and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, so derivative of g with respect to x. Okay, so a, a nice way to remember that is outside in, working outside in. And the reason is we're, we're looking at the, the large function, the outside, and then working our way in. Um, and as we go through this, I'm also going to say the phrase that many calculus teachers love to say, and that is rinse and repeat. Because we, we say we do the outside and then take the derivative, again, of the inside. So, let's talk about this first one, f of x. So we have our outside function, that's this. That's this right here. This, this big thing, you could, you could say that 7x to the third plus 5 is our inside function, and our outside function is, is the big thing being squared, this big quantity being squared. So we're going to take this as f prime, of x. Now again, this, this f and g are not the same f and g we have over here. This is just a general form f and g. So we could, we could call what we have inside here uh, p and q if we wanted to. Okay, th so the derivative is then the derivative of the outside. So I'm going to take this exponent by using the power rule and, and move it out front. So 2 times now 7x to the third plus 5 and then raise that to the first power. We, we reduce the exponent by 1, so that's using the power rule. And then multiplied by what I have left is uh, to take the derivative of the inside. And that is 3 times 7 is 21, and then times x to the second power, and then plus 0. I'll write that out in this step just to show, right? The derivative of 5 is just 0. So now we could uh, simplify all this stuff, and, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just, just a little algebra at this point. This is this whole quantity is to the first power, so we can just distribute that two through, and we've got 14x to the third plus 10, and that is still being multiplied by 21x squared. So in the end, our derivative simplifies as 21 times 14 is going to be. 280 plus another 14 is 294 x to the fifth plus 210 x squared. All right, so that was that was the first example. Now the second one, I'm not going to spend as much time uh, simplifying this, but we will go through working outside in and rinse and repeat this this common thing that. Calc teachers love to say, and I like to say it too, I have to admit. Okay, so we've got the derivative. The derivative of g of x. Outside in, well, what is our outside function? Let's, let's rewrite this as the sine squared. We know that that means this whole thing is being squared. That's just the, the notation we write in trigonometry. We write the squared power right by the trigonometric function. But it means this. It means this whole thing is being squared. So I'm going to move this 2 down. And that is then 2 times sine of whatever's inside. That's 
tangent of 8x all raised to the first power. I'm not going to write that because, well, I'll write it right here. Right, just raised to the first power because we reduce that exponent by 1 multiplied by the next step in, and that is this tangent of 8x. And what is the derivative of tangent? Well, it is secant squared. So multiplied by secant squared of what's inside, and that is 8x. And we're not done. We have one more step to do. We have to then take the derivative of that 8x. So we just keep on working our way in. So multiplied by the derivative of 8x is just 8. So this then is our final answer. And I can rewrite that in a nice uh, all one color. I'll multiply the 2 times the 8 because this is all being multiplied. 2 times 8 is 16. 16. Now notice that this tangent is not being multiplied by the secant squared. It is not being multiplied. It is the sign of the tangent of 8x. So 16 times sine of tangent 8x times secant squared of 8x. So there is a nice example of using the chain rule and we had to just work our way in. We had a couple of steps in that one.